there is a, a lot of trust involved when you pick somebody to move your stuff. You're paying someone to pack up everything you own and move it across the country. And what you don't want is to hire a company with a high number of complaints. That doesn't work. ABC 2 News, Mallory Safaste tells us how you can weed out those businesses because if it matters to you, it's a matter for Mallory. So for several weeks, we've reported on specific companies and how they've disrupted the lives of their customers. Well, after the stories aired, we received numerous emails and calls from other people saying they've been in a similar situation. It's tough to find a way out, so we want to help you avoid becoming trapped. It's a business where bad actors see opportunity. We call them rogue operators or something other than a mover because in many cases they're really not trying to move people. If you take a look at the office of the Inspector General's most wanted list, you'll see a multitude of offenders. 35 of 40 wanted for moving fraud. There are regulations, but the red tape doesn't hold off the criminals. The license for a federal move, an interstate move, is very easy to get. It's about $300, fill out some paperwork, and, and you're given a license. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration regulates all moves that cross state lines. They oversee more than 800,000 a year and receive around 3,000 complaints in the same time frame. It's a small fraction. But when you fall in that percentage, it's like falling down a rabbit hole. Answers don't come easy. Convincing the company to return your things is even more of a challenge. They have everything that you own and some quite a, quite a bit of leverage over you to make sure that you comply with what they're asking for. It's not what moving victims want to hear, but your best protection is not hiring these people in the first place. The government launched an educational campaign around this. When it's time to move, protect yourself from fraud. Your research should begin about eight weeks out from the move. First, verify their identity. Check the Better Business Bureau, the American Moving and Storage Association, the FMCSA. Make sure they're registered and review their complaint history. In some cases, the bad guys don't list a physical address on their website, so that can be a red flag. Next, seek three in-home written estimates. Never do it over the phone. They need to see what you have for an accurate assessment. There are binding and non-binding estimates. Even with non-binding, movers are required by law to deliver your goods for no more than 10% above the estimate. And know your rights. The mover must provide you with this booklet. Read it over and read through your contract. Ask the competitors what, you know, this guy says this. Does that make sense? And, and they'll explain it to you and, and tell you that what, what kind of a game they're trying to play. Too many people have hired rogue operators. You shouldn't have to play detective, but since there isn't robust oversight by the government, your belongings, your valuables, and your memories could easily fall into the wrong hands. We also have a moving checklist on our website. You'll really want to look it over. Rogue operators are tricky. They know what they're doing and what to say to get you to trust them. And shutting these companies down takes time and resources, which is why education is the FMCSA's best weapon. Change, however, could be on the horizon. A working group of industry professionals met last year to discuss concerns, propose solutions. We're still waiting to hear when we will see that final report and their recommendations.